Hello and welcome back. It's Puzzle Time with Sudoku Sleuth and we have what is probably a fantastic puzzle for you today. Now we've had obviously a lot of fun this weekend, four puzzles including one amongst the top 20 but this particular puzzle is no slouch at all and already it's got 94% rating. So I'm particularly excited about it and looking forward to it. Now just one word about the thumbnail before we take a look at the puzzle. Double dash you know, there's a dash and a double in the name of the puzzle, which is sort of the inspiration for today's thumbnail. But you can immediately tell it's fake, you know, aside from the obvious cartoonish look. You know, sleuth dashing and running so fast that there is motion blur behind them. Yeah, that's not feasible or plausible at all. Um, certainly not a runner myself, you know, given my height and size, you know, maybe rowing is probably where I'm at. But, you know, when you're as tall as I am, I think running is always going to work against you. Well, enough of the thumbnail. Let's take a look at the puzzle. This is what we're here for. So we've got Doubler Dash by Thoughtbite. And I believe we featured a puzzle from Thoughtbite before. And if I do actually find it, I will link it as a card up here somewhere. Because um, my, my recollection is it was a fantastic puzzle as well. Now, as I walk you through the rule sets, there's a couple of reasons why I'm particularly excited about today's puzzle. Aside from the intriguing name, the high rating, uh, there is a doubling rule which I always struggle with. But the fact that this is still a one-star difficulty rating means I'm looking forward to being able to solve a doubler puzzle, but you know, easily so, as opposed to struggling for 40 minutes plus or even an hour and, and more. So let's take a look at the rule sets that we have here. So Normal Sudoku rules apply, so that means the digits 1 to 9 in every row, every column, and every 3x3 three three box. Pretty standard for us. Digits in a cage may not repeat and sum to the clue in the top left corner. So killer cages is kind of normally what we would refer to these. And essentially what that means is these two cells, just let me unhighlight them. So these two cells, you can see there is a 7 in there, and they must add up to 7. And you can start thinking about sort of some of the various ways we can get to seven in, in seven digits, for example, one and six would be possible, two and five could be possible, three and four could be possible, but clearly seven and zero is not possible in today's rule set. Or is it? Let's have a look. Right, nine cells, one in each row, column, or box are doublers. And count as double, their value in the cage sums. So remember my example here with the seven, well, one and five might be fine if the one is the double. Let's go even further, let's, let's just go crazy. So two and three would be fine as well. One and three could be fine. So you can see with just that very small tweak to the normal rule set, just how much more difficult puzzles can become. So, um, fingers crossed, we're going to be able to solve this one. But if you want to play along, link will be in the description down below. Well, let me just finish the rule sets and then we'll get started. So, each digit appears in exactly one doubler. So, essentially, in this puzzle, there will be a doubler in every row, in every column, one of them, in every box. But not only that, there will be a one, a two, a three, a four, well, that two wouldn't work, it would have to be somewhere else, because it has to be in a different row and a different column. But you get the picture, we're going to have to use all of the digits 1 to 9. Now the last thing that's mentioned by Thoughtbyte is doublers are not necessarily in cages, and doublers cannot repeat within a cage. So thankfully, you know, if these two cannot be a double, and therefore even further complicating how we're going to have to figure this out. Well, Apparently, there is enough clues, though, for us to be able to solve it with zero digits in the grid. So if you want to give this a go, link will be in the description down below. Good luck to you, and uh, certainly good luck to me as well as I crack on and see how we can solve this one. Let's give it a go. Now, when I was looking through the cages, I spotted what is some nonsensical cages, which I'm going to highlight in green for now. An 18 cage in two cells would require a double 9, immediately breaking the first rule of 
one digit in each box. So you can see that the 18 cages, of which there are three in the grid, must contain the doublers. Otherwise, we're not going to get to 18. Same can be said for 19, because even with two nines, we're not going to get to 19. That only gets us to 18. And with the geometry that we have, that there is a doubler in here, well, it tells us that's not the doubler. These tells us that's not the doubler. These two tells us that's not the doubler. And we're off and running. I'm going to use green, I think, just to highlight that these are the double cells. And we've already got four of them. I beg your pardon. I'm going to say we probably know where a lot more of them are. So not in this row, not in this row. Where would it be in box eight? It's got to be inside the 11 cage. And looking around, you can see it's repeating all around the grid as well. Same sort of rule. These two doublers eliminate columns two and three in box four. So it's got to be inside the 11 cage, 11 cage, 11 cage. So we have a rough idea of where one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight of the doublers actually are, which is, I think, the best possible start that you can have for a doubler puzzle. Let's see what else. So I'm tempted to think about, yeah, let's start with the 18 cages and maybe the 19 cage in a second. Sorry, pardon me. I'm just going to pause the video whilst I quickly blow my nose. Sorry for the weird cut. Uh, just please excuse that. And um, yeah, I guess the weather is turning here in the UK. So I was saying, let's take a look at the 18 cages. So I think the minimum that doublers can be is a five, because that gets us to 10, and then this would be an eight. If I try a four, that gets us to eight, and then this digit would have to be a 10. So that's not going to work. Second possibility could be a six. That gets us to 12, requiring a six. That's clearly not going to work. So six is not an option. Seven with a four and then nine to get us to, no, nine is not an option, eight to get us to 16 with a two. So that's kind of the options that we have for 18. Now, because of the fact that it mentions in the rule set that each digit appears exactly in exactly one doubler, we've essentially eliminated five, seven, and eight from being possibilities. So when we think about the 19, previously, 5 would have been an option, which got us to 10 and then a 9. That's no longer true because we've already used the 5. I assume the 6 is an option. That's 12 with a 7. Uh, 7 and 8 already used. What would be a 9? 9 would be 18 with a 1. So that's the 19 option. I want to think about the 11s as well, because the fact that they're all different, I think is going to force us to use 1, 2, 3, and 4 as doublers. But before I think about the 11s, and I'm sorry, I kind of went silent for a second, I'm actually thinking about 8s. Yeah, I want to think about 8s, but maybe I need to think about the 11s briefly, then come back to 8s, and I'll explain why. So... Five is not available. Now, I think six is too much at an 11 because six doubled would be a 12 and we need four different ones. I think even a five would have been a problematic even though it's no longer available because it would have been five would get us a 10 and then we need two digits to somehow to get us to one. So essentially, we have one, two, three, and four as doublers. I'm actually going to spread them across separate rows for a second. Now, if we double the 4, that gets us to 8. 
And I think we would be forced to put one and two in there to get the remaining three. If we use the three and we double that, that's a six. Yeah, Let, I think what I want to say is normally you can use an eight and an 11 cage because it will be one, two, and eight. But because of this doubling rule, even if I double the one, that gets me to two. With another two, that will be a four. And the maximum digit I can place is a seven in any of these 11 cages because of the doubling rule. Now hold that thought and have a look at this very deliberate set of cages from ThoughtBite. None of these can contain eights. Now, at the same time, I'm going to say two of these must contain an eight. Because it's either, remember, all of these have to be unique. One has to have a five, one has to have a seven, one has to be an eight. Now, the one that has a five, that gets us to ten. So it's essentially a five-eight pair. is one, well, not even five-eight pair. It's five and eight. And then there's another option, which is eight to get us to sixteen with a two. So two of these have to contain an eight. Now think about these rows and columns on the perimeter. I think, for example, if I put an eight in anywhere other than the corners, I mean, this one has already broken the puzzle because I can't put an eight in these two and I can't put an eight in these two. So this eight is not valid. But I'm going to take it a step further and say, well, if I put an 8 in here, even though it doesn't see this cage, I've broken the puzzle. Because I can't put an 8 anywhere in this column now except down here, still eliminating an 8 from this cage and from this cage. So I think the 8s have to be in the corners, and it can't be these two because, again, it would eliminate it from two cages. These two are an 8. meaning this is not the 8-2 um, option or the 5-8 option. This is the 7-4 option. I can actually now eliminate the 7 and 4 from all of these 18 cages. Is that right? It's, no, it's not 2-9, it's 2-8. Now... I want to continue thinking about these cages around the perimeter because the other thing that I'm spotting is a lot of them require ones or two. So now that we've placed a four in here, the seven is either a, a one six pair or a two five pair. Stopping the possibility of us having one and two in this 11 cage. So this 11 would either have a 1 or a 2. Even for getting doublers, every 11 would have to have 1 or 2 because 3, 4, and 5 is too big. It gets us to 12. Now, that's the same here. It's either a 1, 5, or a 2, 4. And again, we're left with an 11 cage that has a 1 or a 2. Same setup here, although the 4 and 1 is somewhat restricted. And then 2 or 3. So there's either a 1 or a 2 in here. Well, if you remember our kind of examples, and I deleted them, I admit, one of them requires a 4 doubler with a 1, 2. So that would be the 8 and the 3. Now you can see there's only one spot. Because of the 6 cage, the 7 cage, after we place the 4 and this 5 cage, there's only one 11 cage that can use the four doubler I, I want to sort of make sure I remember that the four is the one that's doubled in this one now using the one and two eliminated from the eight option this is a three five cage and now this is six seven and nine that's not a seven so that's the four dealt with 
Let's think about three. Three gets us to six. And I could use, and then that we need to get to five. So it's either one, four or two, three. It's clearly not two, three. We've already used the three. So there is a three, one, four setup in one of these 11 cages. It's not this one, because remember, this is either one, five, no, three, one, four. Yeah, it's either one, five or two, four. If I put three, one, four, what would this cage be? So it's not this cage. Could be this cage. I think it can be this cage because it's one, six or two, five. So, and presumably it's not this cage because three, one, four, well, it eliminates the one, four option clearly, but it also eliminates the two, three option because I've used the three as well. So this is three, one, four with three as the doubler. Now we're left with two, which gets us to four and we need a seven. Now remember one six is not available because that would require a one two and there's only one cage of them that was allowed. All the others need a one and two and the adjacent killer cage. So the two would have been a four. We need a seven. One six not an option. Two five not an option. Three four is the only remaining option. So we have a two three four option which we now know will break the five cage because you need either a two three or a one four and this eliminates both options. So this is a two, three, four with a two doubler. Hopefully it doesn't break the six cage, otherwise I'm, yeah, two and four eliminated. One and five is a solid option. This is six, seven, and nine, except really a six, nine, and that's the seven. One, five even tells us the order of this. This is an eight, this is the two, therefore this is the five, and this is the eight. Uh, that's not two, that's not five. I don't know if I want to keep tidying up kind of that much, but last option we had was the one. Let's just work through that. So now we know it's not a one four because there is a one in here for sure. And it's we're doubling the one. We need to get to nine. One and eight not available. Two, seven not available. Otherwise we'd use the one and two. Uh, three, six, not available because the three is taken up by the five. So this is a one, four, five. And these are again, six, seven, nine. You can see immediately the seven has to be here because if this is a six, nine break, uh, sorry, pair, we broke the 19 cage. The seven being here, aside from eliminating it in there, tells us this has to be the one which therefore means this has to be the nine. So that's a six, seven pair. That's a nine. That's another. Well, we can clean this up a bit more. That's not one or six. Therefore, that's the two, five. And this is six, seven. This one tells us this is the five and the one. And this is four and three, we actually know the order of these. What do we have in here? One and three, we don't know the order of these. We have a one and four, we know the order of those. We know this is the three, five, this way around. We actually know quite a bit already. Um, what do we need in here? We need a two and four, we know those. This one here tells us the three and the one. Six and nine, yeah, we will resolve the two and the three. Six and nine, no. Six and nines are persisting on both ends. Can we take this any further at all? I mean, we know that there is a doubler somewhere in here. And kind of the temptation would be that it's in the middle, and then you end up with this sort of pattern, something like that, but we don't know that for certain. It could be really almost anywhere in there. Do I want to pencil mark these? I, I don't think I do. And sorry, this, uh, just for my benefit, this is the double one. 
in this cage. So one, two, three, four, five, not six, seven, eight, and nine. So somewhere in here is a doubler six. Right, cages. I think that's the next thing to focus on, rather than just pencil marking all of these options, which might be helpful, but I'm not actually sure it is. I'm looking at this 12 cage as the smallest of these three and thinking, look at that, we've already placed one, two, three, four, five. The minimum this can be is a six. And on the column, we've placed one, two, three, and four. The minimum this can be is a five. So this is a one, five, six cage. This six is doing some work for us. That's seven, that's six. We should be able to place these now or at least pencil mark them. That's eight and nine. This is um, two, three, seven. Okay. And we can pencil mark these. No, let's do the 13 cage. Minimum this can be is a five. We've already placed one, two, three, and four in the row. Minimum this can be is also a five. I guess it would really be a six. I should take a look at this one. Neither of these are a one now. That's not a one either, which also means that's not the doubler. The one, the one is the doubler down here. Um. We already placed the one, therefore that's a minimum of two. Two, five, and six, that is 13. We actually have to place all the minimums. And this six, again, does some work for us. That's nine, that's six. We need to place here a five, which can only go in one spot, and an eight, which can only be in here. We're left with two, seven, and nine, I'm gonna say except that's not a two. We've eliminated a two from here. Two from there as well. That's not the doubler anymore. And two from here. Um, 14 cage. So now we know because of this circling around in the in box five, the minimum here is three. Minimum here is six. And the minimum here, I guess, would be the next digit up would be, well, not that's not a six because we've got a six in here. The minimum here is seven. And the minimum here is six. So six, seven. How did I get two? That looks like I've broken the puzzle, actually. One, two, three, four. Have I missed something? One, two... Three, four, five. The minimum is indeed six. One, two, three, four, five. Minimum is indeed and six, seven. What? That can't be right. And then the minimum is three. And that's thirteen. That's sixteen. That's not a fourteen cage. I will, I will have to backtrack a second, excuse me. Right, I'm happy with Ah, that's the mistake I made. I put six and five this way around and then the two but obviously this is a five, six pair. So the two is a given, that's better. And then I could actually do the same in here. So this is the minimum of six. And here the minimum can actually be five. And then that would be 11 and that would be three. That's fine now. Five and six, much better. Not nine, not six. I was thinking this is going all too well. Look at this. We now know where the four is in here. That's not fours. We also know that's not four or three. That's the two. That's the doubler. 
meaning these are not the double, that is the double. If we actually place another one of them, uh, this is not two, this is not three. We have a one four pair, which is interesting. That's not three or the double. That's not two again. Okay, before I got distracted, we know that five is somewhere in here. Um, with this error, let's see if we can actually finish. So we've placed all of these. We know that the remaining doubler is a six because we've placed all the others. And we should probably take some of the easy Sudoku wins now. What digit is that? It's an eight, eight, not nine. We still need three, seven, and nine. That's not three. That's an eight. These are not eight. That's the eight. That's a nine. That's an eight. Right, let me just do a bit of tidying up because clearly this is going to make this much easier for everything. And just as I say that, I'm not spotting, spotting any more tidy ups. Well, we know this is a six or nine, that's the remaining digit. Which is surprisingly unresolved. We know that the one is here. And we have eight and nine, in fact. The one is here, the eight is there, and the nine is here. Nines, this is the nine. Need another seven nine, which can only be in there. What else do I need to tidy up? That's not a two. No, we know better than that. That's a seven. That's a three. That's a two. This one tells us that's the five, that's the one. That's the doubler. That's not the doubler. This three tells us that's the four and three. We actually know where the five is now. With my mouse hovering over it, that's a seven. We need six and four, I'm gonna say. Surprisingly, we don't know the orders of these. I mean, the six being in the middle, like I said earlier, kind of makes a lot of sense, but let's continue to work this through. This is six or nine. Have I resolved all of these? Kind of. Right, um, back to, right, so we're not gonna resolve it from here. We're not gonna resolve it from there. Six, nine. What is the rest of this box? We need to place a two, which surprisingly we don't know where it is. And if there is a seven, it's in here. If there is a nine, it's in there. And if there is a six, it's there. Right, I must be missing something that will help us resolve this. Don't all shout at the screen at once. I will spot it, like this nine looking at this six, nine, six. None of these are six anymore. In fact, this six is now looking here. That's the four, that's the six, that's the last doubler. Not in the center, mind you. Glad I didn't assume it was gonna be placed there anyway. Um, this four is doing some work for us. This not being a doubler, that's kind of right. Three, four. Remember the rule sets always if you get stuck. Therefore, that's the four, that's the one, that's the two, that's the one, that's seven. Um, seven, nine, three. Let me just sort out these colors. 
And then let's finish it off with seven to, and if I've not made any mistakes, nine, and that's a solution to today's puzzle. It's an absolutely phenomenal puzzle thought bite. Um, my Sudoku scanning skill sets aside, absolutely phenomenal puzzle. Um, yeah, and I can see why it's a much easier introduction to doubling. Just placing these 18 cages, 19 cages immediately helps you place so many of them. And then the magic that was done around the 11s being now doublers and kind of the puzzlement around the one, two, three, four, the restrictions it placed on the sixes and the fives and the seven cages. This was the only one that could afford having one and two and the 11. Yeah, and then the magic around the eights. I think this was just absolutely phenomenal. And then really the rest of it was fairly straightforward from there on with these cages and then finishing off with actually needing to place the six to be able to place the three and the four. Beautiful puzzle. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I have. And uh, see you back for the next video. Bye for now.